Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Chris and today we're going to talk crayfish or lobsters, rock lobsters in particular. Now I am by no means an expert on this subject but I have kind of taught myself how to catch these guys by hand and now it's uh, it's kind of feeding the family which is really cool. So I've made a bunch of mistakes, still make mistakes but uh, you know I, I I've done some research. I couldn't find a video like this when I was starting out trying to catch them. And I missed a bunch of really good rock lobsters. So what I'd like to do is maybe just show some of the tips, tricks that I've learned, mistakes to make, how to identify these guys, type of ground they're on sort of thing. So yeah, stick around. Hopefully I can help some of you guys catch some of these bad boys. Okay, so first up, just to explain, now a rock lobster is basically a crayfish. So I'm talking about the ones you find in the southern hemisphere, so namely Australia. In particular, I'm on the western coast of Australia. Now, I haven't caught all the crays in and around New Zealand, but they are sort of a type of rock lobster. Now, what I'm thinking of with the North American ones is they're the ones with the big claws. You don't have to worry about that type in the southern hemisphere. And they're all kind of similar. Uh, different rules and regulations, I'll talk about that later. But I'm going to talk specifically about tropical rock lobsters. So they're the ones that you get in sort of any tropical area of Australia and going further north as well. So with that, we've got a what's called a painted cray. Now a painted cray, I'll try and get one on the screen here that I've caught before. They're a beautiful, beautiful rock lobster. Usually not quite as big as their cousin, the ornate. The painted cray, you'll be able to really tell the difference by them is on their little stalks that come out of their head is bright orange and they have black bands down their green sort of abdomen. So that's called a painted cray and you'll find those on, usually in coral. So they'll be hanging around, sticking in the coral. They're usually not down deep under a bommy from what I've found and they're not usually down under any deep ledges. They're actually usually quite easy to find. They have bright sort of orangey white antenna. So I like to call these antlers. I don't know why, but we'll call them antlers from now on. And you'll often see them sort of sticking out from under a rock ledge and that's when you know to go for them. I'll talk more about that later. The other type we're going to be talking about today is the ornate which is the second type of tropical rock lobster and the ornate are the ones that you, you get the giant giant ones that you see people catch on YouTube and stuff. They're huge. They put up a mega fight. So you'll normally find these big guys on a sandy bottom, I find, under a big bommy or coral uh, sort of head, I guess. So you're looking for a big lump on its own. I often find there usually won't even be a ton of fish around it. And you'll look at it from the surface of the water before you dive and you go, oh, there's not going to be anything under there. And then lo and behold, you dive and there's one this bloody big. So that's your ornate. And you can tell those apart because A, they're huge. B, they're beautifully colored and see the way I can usually tell is the base of their antlers is like a purpley color, not bright orange like the painted. And just be ready, when you go down to grab one of those, they put up a huge fight. They're really, really strong. I've had ones out battle me that are only about that big and I will not be able to hold on to them. And I'll chuck this clip up now, but this is me celebrating getting one too early and making the mistake of holding it in one hand. Don't do that with an ornate. And then we're going to move on. We've got the what's called the Western Red Rock Lobster. And that's your typical big red crayfish. We've got this huge one here to show, which is cool. 
they don't fight as hard as the ornate I find and you usually go, don't see them this big. I find they have a tendency to move sideways like a crab really quick when you go for them and that can make them I find a bit harder to grab than the tropicals. Now they live in entirely different sort of waters so they're usually further south. You'll find them in more areas like behind me so weedy bottoms, often some swell coming in, some breaking sort of white water hitting shallow reef. You don't want to be going too deep for them if you're a beginner like myself because once you go down there you've got a fight on your hand. Don't stress yourself out and get all bound up in a cave or something. Just go for some shallow stuff you know that you can you can stand the breath hold, especially if you're on your own like myself, I'm often diving on my own. I'm not going to be pushing my breath hold while wrestling one of these prehistoric beasts. So yeah, bear in mind. But anyway, the ground you're after, a little bit further south, often weed coming through, like you'll see this weed on the beach. That tells me, I reckon there's going to be crayfish. There's going to be western reds out here. And you're often looking for water that receives a lot of current and swell and white water because they really like nutrient dense water. Whereas you'll find the tropical rock lobsters, they'll sit in sort of tepid, warm water without any current flow at all and you'll find the big ornates there so yeah different sort of territory and then further south you've got the southern rock lobster which i can't show you today now i personally don't have much uh, experience wrestling with those yet so i can't really help you on those ones but as far as i know they're quite similar to the western red and it, it's pretty much the same animal Okay, so on this video, I don't really want to come into the so the nitty gritty of the rules and regulations. So they'll be different in Australia. They're obviously different in New Zealand as well, or wherever you might be catching these. So I don't want to talk too much about this in case I send you down the wrong track. But in a nutshell, when you're diving for craze rock lobsters, you definitely need to have yourself one of these little rulers. Under here, we've got your specific lobster that you're going for. And this is a minimum measurement that the carapace has to be. I'll try and zoom in soon. I'm filming on my own, so I apologize. But the carapace is the larger part, basically the head, that goes down to the end of sort of the armor plating before the tail begins. That's your carapace. You are measuring that when you're going for a cray or rock lobster. Whatever you do, do not be tempted. And I have been tempted before. Everyone is. Don't be tempted to take an undersized one, even if it's just almost there. The fine and what you would get would be ridiculous. Fisheries take stuff like this really seriously. I mean, maybe you, they'll give you the benefit of the doubt. You give, Just don't do it. So just stick to the regulations. You're also doing it for the rest of us beginner cray fishermen out there. We want to be catching these big ones like this. So leave the little ones, let them grow up. Only catch the ones that are in size. Second thing I want to talk about is berries and tar spot. Now you may have heard about this already. I had no idea what to look for when it came to tar spot when I was finding out that you can't catch a tar spot cray. Now what that means is a male has deposited sperm on a female and then the female will fertilize with that tar spot and create eggs, berries, more crays. Now you will find this right here kind of between the legs basically of the cray and it's either black or white and it's pretty noticeable when you know where to look if you find that like i did in this video here if you find that Unfortunately, you've got to put it back. It means it's a female that is going to have eggs. The next one you want to look out for is what's called berries or eggs, and they are usually red, and they will sit in a big bunch on the female's tail. You can't miss them. They look kind of like a cauliflower or, you know, just what you would expect it to look like. And then let's talk about anatomy. This is a male, so you never have to worry about that. All you have to worry about is sizing. A male has these fans on the outside of its tail, okay? Those fans tell me it's a male. They'll have spikes down the side, be careful of that. And then a female will have these fans plus a bunch of hooked fans that are fluffy underneath. They're actually quite different. Sorry, I don't have one to show you today. There's only so many of these I could keep in the freezer. I ate the other one. So 
yeah, keep an eye out for that. Then you know it's a female. So then you would really want to be looking for tusk bottle berries, okay? But male, just grab them. Some people, if they find a massive rock lobster, they'll know it's a breeder and they'll chuck it back. I mean, depends how hungry you are. I've not been in that position. I've never found one so big that I was con anyway. So that's how you can tell those apart. That's the anatomy of a lobster. Okay, now before I talk about catching techniques, let's just briefly talk about a lobster snare or a cray loop. That's one of these guys. This is a like a pretty long one. They're not. I would actually prefer a shorter one. If you do end up getting one shorter, it's easier to use with one hand. I'll show you why in a sec. All this is is a bit of stainless steel, and you've got a sprung loop at the end. Really straightforward. You basically get down, you've got weighted belt on your dive suit or whatever. Always go weighted because if you're floating up it's impossible to catch them. You'll spook them. You want to go down, sometimes you can use a dive torch depending on your rules. I never have. You want to get the flat part of the cray loop. You've gone down, you've found one of these guys under a deep ledge and you will find the western reds, the southern rock lobsters. They like deep ledges in rock with weed around and you know that breaking surf and whatever. They are much harder to get and I find harder to find than the tropicals. You're going to go down, you've got your little cray loop, right? You're going to scoop this in behind the lobster without spooking it. Talk more about that too, apologies. You're going to push the end in and you are going to, I'll show you on here, you are going to get this underneath the tail and then bam you close it shut you've caught the cray it's fighting you like this and then you've got to get out alive with your catch that is a cray loop way easier said than done i'm not a fan of using these the times i have i've actually wished i'd just gone a little bit deep and tried to grab it by hand or just left it because i get a bit bummed when i miss them now a shorter one would be better because you can actually push the loop in and then hold it like that and keep it open and then you can come in, you can hold on to the rock. But with this is so long, I can't hold on to a ledge. So this is a two-handed job. So I've got to be like lying on outside and do that. And it just doesn't work so well for me. But you'd be able to get in a bit deeper, I guess. Anyway, this was $80 Australian. Worth the money if you're going for Western Reds, potentially. Definitely don't get one of these if you're going for Tropical Craze. There's never a time that I've found, I mean, I'll probably eat my own words with some of the comments, but it's never a time I've found that I wish I've had one of those in the tropical parts of Australia. So that's your cray loop. And again, yeah, not a big fan. I've lost crays off them as well. I've found that they actually break free. So one thing I would suggest is if you do manage to wrangle one of these bad boys, pull on the spring a bit so that you've created some tightness and then swim up to the surface like that. Anyway, that's your cray loop. So I'll put that there. And then on the, this sucks by the way, in Queensland, so on the eastern coast of Australia, you're allowed to shoot them with your spear gun. I find that the weirdest rule. Because again, like I said before, you've got to be able to tell whether the tar spot or buried. And that's really hard because you don't see a lobster for the first time with its butt towards you. It doesn't happen. They're always going to be head facing out. So how can you tell? You've kind of got to go down there and play around with them and then come back out and shoot them with your spear gun. Doesn't make sense to me. You're definitely not allowed to do that in Western Australia and I think that's probably a better rule. You, and it's, it's not as sportsman-like. It's quite easy to shoot a crayfish. They don't move unless you're trying to grab them with your hands. So if you shoot them, it's just easy. It's like a, it's just a cheap way to do it anyway. Yeah, that's that segment done. All right, now what you've all been waiting for, I'm, I'm guessing, catching techniques. How to get these guys. I'm glad I've got a, a, a beautiful model to show you. And uh, he's a bit dead.
basically you've snorkeled around on the surface this is what I've been doing you snorkel around on the surface and you're looking for ledges you have either a seen these popping out which is your best that's your best chance you've got especially if he or she has not seen you they've got good eyesight or you've just gone down you've ducked dived hoping you'll find some and you've seen some that are actually in range that's your best bet so you have got these antlers right these little antennae they these feel around in the water like other insects and they're looking for I guess maybe some food but they're also looking for predators and they will touch their surroundings with this this one of course is broken off was much longer they get very long now they'll usually be about here and they'll just kind of stick their nose out of their hole your best bet for catching this guy is don't let him see you so if you can if you've seen his little antlers sticking out come around behind breathe up and get ready for a fight this is the same with the tropicals and then you're going to want to dive down glove on you're going to want to dive down left or right and you're going to want to grab this cray by the thick part as hard as you can of their antlers do not under any circumstances grab these because they'll snap off and they snap like twigs and then phew, he's gone okay so you'll never see him again you won't get another chance usually so that is the technique come down don't go from underneath or straight at because I find you'll touch these and he'll skyrocket backwards so come down jam in as hard as you can grab those antlers and you've got him he might still be stronger than you or he might use these incredibly strong claws on his feet to grab onto a rock and then you run out of breath and come back up don't die trying to catch these not advisable behind their eyes they have these two huge spikes they are going to get you if you're going down for a rock lobster you will get spiked you'll bleed it'll hurt and it'll take a few days to heal because they they don't get infected but they just get kind of a bit gross and nasty the the wounds but just don't be afraid you've got to go out and you're going down you're like you're trying to punch it in the head wham and you're gonna grab him and that's your best bet if you come down real tentatively i mean i've seen expert divers go down and tickle them out and they'll actually come out and you can just grab them like it's their friend but then you would feel terrible about eating it so i usually come down like i'm fighting the prehistoric beast this thing is and i'm in for a battle and it may kill me so i'm going to come down and i'm going to grab them now luckily we don't have to worry about nippers none of them have nippers that are going to get you to any degree so don't be scared of that but i have had someone tell me if you shove your finger in their little mandible things they can kind of bite you but i think that would be very rare and i don't really know what you'd be doing trying to put your finger in its mouth uh so anyway you've grabbed him definitely get your second hand on him as soon as possible and your best bet is hold here and hold here put him in either a catch bag or swim him to your boat or just swim him back to shore i usually don't go with a catch bag uh, I'm sure the sprung ones would probably be quite good with like a spring top to them. I don't have a catch bag because their claws go everywhere and they, they're impossible in a bag. And by that stage, I'm stressing out and then I'm worried about sharks coming in because sharks are attracted by the <coughs> noise that these things make. Sorry, that's the best impression, impersonation of a crayfish I can do. They make a cool noise. You know you got him when he's making this weird noise. It's like his cry for help, like put me back, put me back yeah you got them so don't grab the tail the tail is spiky and their method of propulsion is by slamming this back onto their stomach and they swim backwards and don't underestimate how much muscle is in this thing i mean this is bigger than my bicep this thing's huge it's got strength behind it plus some spikes so if you grab it by the abdomen call the abdomen it will it hurts like how you're gonna get your hands smashed up and it's happened to me before a few times it's not the end of the world but it, it it does really hurt and then there you go now another thing to talk about is when you've missed one or one's gotten out of your hand 
you will see them i haven't seen this with a western red by the way only tropicals namely ornates because they're the ones that get away from me the most they start going bam 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 through the water because you've gone down for an ornate on that sandy bottom and often their bommy their coral head will have an exit at least one exit and they know where the exit is and you go down you spook it you piss it off and it goes like a missile and this thing's flapping away underwater and you need to just freestyle swim after this thing and catch it. That's your best bet. Another technique is try and block with either your buddy, your dive buddy or your partner or with something like a loop or your spear gun. Try and block the escape route. I find that works quite well. If they feel like their escape route is blocked they often won't go for it. They'll like hunch up and they'll just try and hide in their bomb. And it gives you more time to maybe even have a few goes. And I've spent recently actually with a mate, we probably together did 10 or 11 dives to try and get one or eight out and eventually came up on this coral bommie because he knew he was compromised and it was only a matter of time before we would get him. And luckily I saw him out of my corner of the eye and grabbed him. I'll run that clip. Turned around. I don't reckon, man. I grabbed, I've pulled something off and I grabbed his tail and it was super spiky. So he's like wedged that way now. But before he was here, so I reckon he's coming. Just one more crack. I think I'll give up on that one. Move on. Oh, no. <laughs> Good job. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so that's so much fun. The other way that's a really fun way to do it is I actually hung on to the back of a kayak a long time ago with my snorkel and mask in the water. My fiance was paddling around the place and she was using that for exercise and having a great time. And I was looking for bommies for ornates. And every time I'd spot one that was nice and shallow, I would dive for it. And a few times I got big ornate craze, I'd grab him and then I'd just chuck him in the kayak. And that was to still to this day, my favorite time going for rock lobsters. There's your hunting technique, okay? First of all, don't let him see you. B, don't touch his little antenna, his, uh, his, his antlers. C, go straight down for the base, bam, grab him hard there. Don't let go, get him to the surface, he's yours. Obviously measure him. Now, I haven't done this personally, that might be illegal, and if one of you is a fishery officer, please, I'm ignorant. I've seen people clip their tail and I think a lot of people clip their tail to show that they've been caught or something. Can you just look up the regulations yourself? I don't know anything about that. I don't clip the tail, I just chuck it and, and I'm good to go. But I've not been boarded by a fishery officer when I've had crayfish, so I'm not sure if they would have told me off or not. I mean, I doubt you'd go to prison for that. Um, but anyway, yeah. And then, moving on a little bit further, where is the meat in this thing? It's in the tail. You've got a little bit in the head, and on the western red, and especially the uh, the New Zealand craze, like the pack horse cray and stuff, you've got quite a bit of meat in the legs, but um, your ornates are fine, it's not even worth cooking them up. So normally I actually cut underneath the tail, and I just twist the tail off, and I keep that, rather than keeping the whole cray. And then I'll sometimes use the head, so the rest of the cray, as burly, to try and catch like tuskfish, like black spot tuskfish, absolutely love lobsters so that's a good one to go for if you're a spear fisherman kind of beginning spear fisherman it's, it makes great burly but obviously 
bear in mind sharks, but I, from my experience, I haven't found that crayfish burley has brought sharks in before. I really hope that has helped some of you. I made lots of mistakes, lots and lots of mistakes and missed heaps of them, but hopefully with some of those tips, you'll be able to grab some of your own. I would love to hear from you in the comments if A, you've gone for some and missed, B, you could have used this video a while ago when you started, or C, you're just about to you know, go on holiday, you're going up north of Australia, whatever, and you're ready to go for these things because you've seen a lot of people on YouTube have a hell of a good time. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see videos of me missing lots of craze, they're up on my channel. But yeah, cheers for watching. Have a nice day.